back. Minshew hasn't learned that yet. That that's chemistry. That is um, that's finesse. That's touch. He'll learn that as he goes. Foles knows he can make that throw to Chark. So when you talk about Minshew to Chark, we're talking about singles and doubles with more targets. Yes, that's a great that's a good analogy. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about today's matchup. You have Philip Rivers, who's been throwing in abundance of interceptions against Gardner Minshew. That's a pretty interesting quarterback battle we have this afternoon here in Northern Florida. I like it, but I also know that Philip Rivers is a Jaguars killer. Over his career, he's thrown for over 2,300 yards. He's thrown 21 touchdowns. There is something about playing against Jacksonville that brings out the best of him. And if we have a secondary that might be depleted today, we don't know yet whether Ronnie Harrison is going to play or not, that plays into the passing game of the Chargers and, and what they're going to do. I know that Philip Rivers hasn't been the same player this year than he has in years, and he has had his ups and downs. He's still prolific. I mean, he's still throwing for 3,000 yards, and he's still throwing touchdowns, and he's still tossing the ball over the yard. But there's just something about him that when you look at it, you know that he's almost 38 years old, and that at some point, players start to break down. The connection between Rivers and Minshew is they're both gunslingers. They both like throwing the ball on the fly. Rivers has a little bit of mobility. He's, it's not great. He's also a big, sturdy quarterback. I'm curious to see how the Chargers offense operates on a long field as opposed to Minshew playing on a short field. Rivers and his wide receivers have no problems moving the ball downfield, a la Tampa Bay last week, because they just ate up the secondary. Minshew doesn't have a problem moving the ball downfield. When he gets to the red zone, that's when he has issues. Phillips Rivers is more prolific when he has a shorter field to play with. Let's talk about the Jalen Ramsey departure. A lot of I feel that the Jaguars got a good return for Jalen Ramsey, but do you feel that the trade of a Jalen Ramsey during the middle of the season may have deflated this team, knowing that you're giving away a guy who is certainly a playmaker, a, a difference maker on defense, and it looks like they're having a lot of their problems on defense as well. Do you feel that it has bit them badly this season? Most definitely. The most telling reason why is what A.J. Bouye said in the locker room a couple of weeks ago. We don't have the personnel we thought we were going to have. Marcel Darius got hurt. That affected the run defense. And, oh, boy, has it affected the run defense. Uh, Telvin Smith, they thought he was going to be here. They expected him to be here. He retired. That left a huge gap at linebacker. And, oh, yeah, their best player, who by far is their best player on defense and on offense, sucked his thumb and forced his way out of Jacksonville. It's a big deal. So he knows, the players know, that things like that affect – not only the defensive unit that affects the roster, it affects the locker room, it affects planning, it affects coaching staff, it, inf it affects the front office. It is damning. The, the return is great, you're right. The, uh, the two first round picks and the fourth round pick um, are gonna help really rebuild this team. And the Jaguars look like they'll get two picks in the top 20, which is wonderful. But for now, they're still licking their wounds. You, you, can't, you can't fix that overnight. Well, it's amazingly enough that when you talk about a guy in the draft who's done well, defensive end Josh Allen, who was selected seventh overall in the 2019 draft, we all applauded that pick. He had, he's posted his ninth sack against the Tampa Bay Bucks and has now registered the most sacks by rookie in Jaguars history. That says an awful lot that at least they're able to get, that they cashed in on that pick. The one thing that you haven't seen a fall off in with the Jaguars this year is their pass rush. They're still able, they may not be sacking the quarterback, but they're able to get to the quarterback. And that's a testament to how the defensive scheme is, although it's not popular. Josh Allen is a unique talent at 6'6 and 245, and he runs like a cat or a gazelle or whatever you want to call it. He can move offensive linemen who are 50, 60 pounds heavier than him and with his, his quickness. That also allows Unique and Gockley on the other side to feast at getting to the quarterback. When they called when they called his name, remember we were watching and at six, um, uh, was it, the, it was at seven, the Giants took, took uh, Daniel Jones. Jones and right. we were like, oh, now who are they taking? Are they gonna take the tight end? Uh, or are they gonna take Josh Allen? And uh, audibly you could hear everybody say, you gotta take Allen because he, freaks of nature like that right. just don't come along every, every you know so often. 
He reminds me a lot of Lawrence Taylor and how he's disruptive. I mean, I'm not making the comparison of the two. Oh, okay. can, That's fair. But he's disruptive. I think that he is a hybrid. If they played a 3-4, he'd be an outside linebacker and he'd have 15 sacks. On the line, he's able to manipulate how, how offensive co- line coaches scheme. This kid can drop back and play coverage, which we've seen him do a few times, but mainly he's on the line. He's going to get another sack. He's going to get another two. He's going to get another three. He possibly could still wind up with 14 sacks this year. He's just a rare talent that you just don't see come along, and you certainly don't see it come along here for the Jaguars. The Jaguars have three really good pass rushers. Add Calais Campbell to that. Not many teams in the NFL can say that. By contrast, Joey Bosa on the other side, who was the number one, the third pick in the draft, I believe that was the Ramsey draft. Was it the Ramsey or the Fournette draft? I don't remember which one. But anyway, he has the same kind of skill set without the quickness. He's a little bit bigger. He can move off offensive linemen around. Um, but he needs more of a push, straightforward. Allen's more agile around the edge. Okay, let's go back to Foles and Minshew. I told you on our program before mm-hmm. that I had a gut feeling that the Jaguars would not trade Foles. It appears as though they're not going to give up on that uh, too quickly. I think that that's a wise move. I don't think they're going to get much of a return for him, plus the contract is not tradable. Do you think that Nick Foles has a chance to win this job next year, depending on what we see with Gardner Minshew? And then I'll preface that about the coaching situation, but let's start with that. Yes, and I'll tell you what. I'm going to bet that you can quote me on this, but I'm going to bet. Well, I plan on it. Okay, good. Recording. I'm going to record, yeah. But anyway, I bet that come March, April, the Jaguars are going to get a lot of phone calls. Not for Foles. They're going to see what they want for Minshew. Hmm. I, I, I believe that you're going to see three, four teams that may not be able to draft a quarterback because of positioning say, what will it take? And maybe that's the route they go. The contract, whether, whether you want to break it down as $88 million dollars or two years, or however you want to do it, the Jaguars are on the hook for $51 million. They're not going to let go of their investment. They're tied to that. So they have at least one more season with him. Do I think he's going to come back and play better in training camp and and win the job? Possibly. I also think it creates a real cluster, no matter who is coaching the team or who is the general manager, because let's say for the sake of argument, they win the next four games with Minshew. How do you justify taking a rookie and saying, hey, buddy, why don't you have a seat? We're going to let the veteran take it. It's not, it's not ideal. It's a great situation to have. But I do think that Foles still has a, a, a more than a fighter's chance to win this position. I'm going to give you five players that you build a core around and give me five. We're not looking at five B, C, or whatever, but give me five players. Go ahead, David. Uh, Josh Allen. Unique Ngakwe, A.J. Bouye, T.J. Chark, Jawan Taylor. Okay. Why? Put me on the spot here. Of course I do. Okay, all right. You keep the defensive ends because defensive end, left tackle, and quarterback are the three premier positions that you draft for. You already have two outstanding pass rushers. The Jaguars also need to make sure they get him under contract after the season. The right tackle you keep because... Although he had a bad game against Tampa Bay, he was really he's been really good. You know, this this year. I think it tends to, he's gonna be just get better. And he may at by the end of the year have the best season of any of the offensive linemen who have started. You keep Chark because you need somebody to throw to. He he's six four and like I said, one ninety nine or two hundred or whatever it is, stop soaking wet, but he's a unique talent. You can't trade that speed. And then, I'm sorry, who was the fifth one I said? Tell me. I have to go back and think. All right, go okay, ahead. No, um, the two defensive ends. Oh, A.J. Bouye. Um, I could have said Ronnie Harrison, and we talked a little bit about that this week, too. All right. I, I take the veteran Bouye because, number one, he's been an all-pro. Number two, he is the veteran, and he is the, he's the peacemaker in the secondary. And what I mean by that is, is that he puts everybody in position. He talks to them. He teaches. He, he leads by example. He is what... Calais Campbell is to the front line. Uh, he is that to the secondary because it's a very young secondary. You keep that continuity because he's also a good locker room guy too. And you need that stability too while you're building. Okay. When the Jacksonville Jaguars kick off next year, 
who will be their starting quarterback? <laughs> um, Nick Foles. Okay. All right. Well, I want to go over some administration stuff, and then we'll have predictions. First okay. of all, Tom Coughlin, will he be with the Jaguars a whole lot longer, or will he be part of the massive house cleaning that I have a feeling that Shad Khan's going to have? My heart says yes, my head says no. And I mean that is just that I could see a scenario that we've talked about on your show where they do clean house and they keep Coughlin to still run the show. There are scenarios where they keep Coughlin and the general manager and they let the head coach go. I'm going to say that Coughlin's going to be here for one more year at least. But I think that there will still be major changes to management in the front office. David Caldwell. Gone. Gone. He's, he, he's done well. Um, when he first came here and the draft classes were not great, he caught a lot of flack. And he's made some mistakes with his drafting and his free agent signings and whatnot. But 17, 18, and 19 have been better. You can't dismiss that. I like, I like what he's doing. I don't think that you can keep the general manager and, take and, and get yourself rid of the head coach. Also, in most cases, the quarterback, the general manager, and the head coach are all connected together. Well, it looks like Marone is on the way out. Last year, Nick, uh, sorry, uh, Bortles was gone, and they kept David Caldwell. At some point, they will make a change. I'm just thinking that if they make a change, it's going to be a sweep. So he, he, he's gone. All right, we'll talk about Doug Marone. You alluded to it now. Yeah, I'll go ahead. You can go ahead and uh, elaborate. Okay, you and I both like Doug Marone. He's a great guy. He's every man. Uh, he is taken more shots from, from the media and how he has handled situations with Ramsey and playing and losing records and not having anybody speak on behalf of the team. He has taken bullets left and right. But the bottom line is, is they're not winning. I don't see him surviving this. Last year, we all thought he was gone because they lost seven in a row and they went from 10 and six to five and 11. And you know, Shad decided, we're gonna give him all one more shot. The injuries have been a problem, and the quarterback situation is still a problem. And we've had, you know, problems with our defense, and we've lost Jalen Ramsey. But the bottom line is, is that they've only got four wins. And let's say, for the sake of argument, they lose all four remaining home games, then he, then he must go. But I don't see him withstanding this. He's gone. So if I had to give you two top potential candidates for a replacement, and I'm only limiting you to two, who would be the right? Who would be the right? Uh, fit stuff here in Northern Florida. Can I give you three? Because this is sure. something I was talking about go ahead. earlier today. Uh, number one, I'd go talk to Robert Soleil, who is the defensive coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers, who was the linebackers coach here under Jack Del Rio, and see what interest he has in becoming the head coach. He is a great mind. He's young. He could keep Filippo as his offensive coordinator. He could keep some of the support staff. I hope that they would keep uh, Keenan McCardell to work with the wide receivers. He's the guy I would target one. Number two, I would target uh, Ron Rivera, who was just let go from Carolina. Sometimes after 9, 10, 11 years, you make a change. Ron Rivera is a great coach. He's also a great players coach. I don't know how the dynamic works between him and Coughlin because they're two different personalities. But he's great for the community, and he's a positive influence on this team. And then third, if I had to take an, another shot, um, I would still open the door to... Josh McDaniels with a caveat. If they're going to try and get a general manager and they're going to try and wipe everything clean and they don't have a position that is opened up like a Coughlin position of vice president of player personnel, go get Scott Pioli, who had experience with Kansas City in New England, have him run the show, and entice McDaniels to come here and coach. Do you really think that Josh McDaniels would come here? No, I don't, but I, you asked me, so I'm talking well, about okay. it. That's okay. All right, well, let's, okay. let me throw a hypothetical out okay. here. Mike McCarthy. I lo- I knew you would go there, too. You I, I, of course. I, I, we're going to get I, 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 I like, figure what I'm I, all I like about, Mike, right? I like Mike McCarthy, but I think that there are going to be more pro- high-profile jobs that are going to be available. And I think that if people were to turn down certain positions, um, Dallas... Maybe that's a position that interests him. The Redskins are going to be looking for somebody. I see him in Washington more readily than I see him in Jacksonville. There are key there are parts that, that fit here for him, 
but for some reason I just don't see it as a fit. Especially especially if 